Morning guys, welcome back to the One Auto channel. Just going to do a quick video for this one. I've uh, got a 2005 Golf 1.9 TDI. Uh, this is this one here behind me, there. And uh, this one's in for a fuel gauge problem. What happened is it had a rear end collision a little while back now. It's had all that repaired, but ever since then the fuel gauge hasn't worked properly. So let me show you inside and see what's going on. Right, let's show you what's going on. Uh, I've already had the autel connected up to it. Uh, ignition is on. Fuel gauge is down there. Can we see that? Yeah, you can just about see that. So it's reading just under a quarter. Um, I've uh, I read the codes first of all. I have cleared the codes on the autel at the moment. Just I'll explain why in a moment. But this is what I had: um, a 00771 code, and it says a passive or sporadic fuel level sensor G mechanical malfunction makes sense to me it's ever since we've had a collision at the rear end my guess is that it's, it's took a good jolt um, the fuel level fuel level sensor and uh, I'll have to investigate it we'll lift the rear seat take it out and uh, see see what's going on in there I have already and I'll just show you run through it again I've tested the gauge um, on the Autel here we can do let's get it set up for you we can do some active tests um, we can select them uh, uh, individually but for some reason it's not letting us that's why I cleared the code to see if it would uh, be that that was uh, not letting us but it, it won't but it will let us do it if we just uh, uh, go through them one by one so it says press start to activate so let's have a look what we can, what's going to come up first Okay, so it's going to do the tack first and says activate. So I'll press that, we'll watch the tack, see what happens. There we are, that's working, no problem. Click next. Next, it's going to do the temperature, activate. There's the temperature gauge going up, so that's all good. Next is the fuel gauge. So if this goes up, we know that the, uh, the gauge and the uh, module and everything is okay. There we go, that's fine, that's going right up to maximum. So next it does the speedo, but we escape from there because we don't need to go any further than that. There you go, and everything comes back online. Right, so I'll just show you where we're at in the back here. Got the rear seat popped up under this carpet. So we'll get this plastic cover off, we'll get the sender out and we'll take a look at it. Right, I didn't film taking it out because I didn't want to get diesel everywhere and it's a bit of a two-handed job. So. Um, what I've done here, just quickly show you, disconnected the two fuel pipes. That's done easily by pressing these little tabs just here at the side. Just press those in and pull them up. Two there, there's an electrical connector which is here, which is just a red, pull the red tab up and then sort of press, push down and pull up at the same time and that releases that. And uh, then the actual um, sender itself and fuel pump assembly is, is uh, held in there with a lock tab like that I just generally put a bit of tipex on so I know where it was and uh, it's just a case of giving it a little tap around the side with a little hammer and chisel hammer and screwdriver only gently just dunk like that and push out it comes so let me show you what I found because as soon as I lifted it up I knew there was a problem <clears throat> so here we have it as soon as I lifted this out of the tank as I lifted this piece up this piece with the float and the pump inside was all laying on its side I thought okay there's something wrong there it normally comes out as in, all in one and you can see what's happened obviously in the uh, road traffic accident is these two bits here one there there are we sorry these two pieces here, one there and one there, have broken. They should be on there like that. And actually, they were actually down like this. So this is just laying, ba laying basically at the bottom of the fuel tank. Um, therefore, we cannot get a correct reading from our gauge. It looks a bit messed up and a bit mangled in there. Anyway, I've been on to my local VW supplier. Uh, which is TPS and they're sending one over this afternoon so when I get it I'll show you the new one and we'll pop it in. Another thing that I did that I forgot to mention uh, just before I took it all the way out <coughs> excuse me, is uh, while it was still plugged in and the ignition was on 
I got this float and moved it all the way to the top and the gauge went all the way to the top so that just confirmed to me that uh, all the wire in the circuit integrity from the, from the pump all the way forward is absolutely fine. All right, so the new pump has turned up, done a little bit of unboxing, and here it is. That is what it looks like. That's what it should look like, but well, this is a modified version of it. So, um, yeah, while I was waiting for it, uh, I took, some more, took a closer look at this, uh, where these bits are broken. And, oh yeah, I think they're supposed to, have a, supposed to be sprung loaded at the top, so I did some skinny dipping in with my arm into the tank of diesel, which was beautiful, and dug out the uh, spring and this piece here, which should go in there. Let me just pop that in there. That goes in there, that's the fuel return. So when it's above there, it drops the fuel back inside the uh, sump of this pump and that goes after all this with one hand you can see where that goes that spring goes on there that goes down on there there you go so you've got the sprung loaded effect so anyway at least all these broken parts have been retrieved out of the tank so we'll set this to the side bin and uh, I'll get this unwrapped and put back in the vehicle. Got a new seal as well. Part numbers, if anybody wants to know, uh, is 1KO 919050AB. Right. Here we have it. Okay, all unwrapped. This is the modified spring on this one. Slightly different, slightly different look in, in, in shape, just modified version, and there's the, the action that we're looking for. So we'll just pop that to one side. Uh, just gonna get this seal in, first of all. Trouble with diesel, it's a bit stinky. Just put a little bit of diesel around this seal just to lubricate it before we slot it in. What I'll do is I'll show you actually, I'll connect up the wiring um, and uh, we'll show you how the gauge works. That stinks, get some rag. Alright, there's my plug. That should be on the empty position. So, plug it in. Can't get springing back to the hammer there. Stay. There we are. The pump's going to prime. Um, so, if you're doing this to test your uh, old one, Make sure you've got something underneath the outlets here to catch any deals that might still be in the pump. Okay, ignition on. There's the prime of the pump. Right. Let's show you. Gauge is on zero. So if I lift up this float, bear with me. If I lift up this float now, all the way up as far as it will go, my gauge should go up to maximum, and it does. Bring it back down, the gauge goes down, my fuel light comes on. Back up again. There we are. Back down again. While the ignition is on, what I was going to show you was the live beta on the Autil actually. Um, so we'll go advanced measure values. Okay. So select all our ones relating to the fuel. 
show those. Okay, so what it's saying now, we are set, actually we're on zero, as if it's an empty tank. So we're saying that the fuel level in litres has three litres, and there's the ohms across the sender. So if I put it up to maximum, put the float all the way up, you can see it changing there, 52 litres, and again going all the way down. So we're going from fuel sender resistance 289 ohms at 3 litres up to 47 ohms, down to 47 ohms rather, at 52 litres. Fuel gauge 1 resistance 291 at empty and 49 at full. There we go. Lovely. All right, let's get this installed. Okay, I'll unplug the wiring first of all. That's it. The ignition's back off, by the way. So, a little bit of diesel around the top, on the top edge here where the seal sits, just to lubricate it, help it slide inside the seal. These pipes back out of the way. Be gentle with them. This is the way this sits with this tab piece just here facing the rear of the car. feel that that is sitting on the bottom now so I can push down because it's sprung loaded like so so I pushed against the spring and I've pushed down and into the seal because it's all lubricated nicely already and then I can get my lock ring this is where I marked it before I don't know if you can see there, there's a paint mark just there, and I put a paint mark down on the tank as well. Oh, springing back up. Get your locking ring aligned. Give it a turn. That's actually nearly got lined up straight away. I expect there's a special tool to not to undo this, but I haven't got one. So that's how I was how I was, how I've always done them. Never had a problem yet, apart from the plastic rings where it's best to get a tool because the, uh, the the ridges on the edge, you can knock those off. That has got my paint mark aligned perfectly just there. There's a dot just here on this tab I was talking about which aligns with an arrow that's on the tank. So that's all good, we're in the right position. We're not going to get any false readings from the, the gauge or any fuel pickup problems. Now. The connections, they are the same size, you can put these on incorrectly. That's it, that comes out. They do, look, it's going to fall where it, where it wants to sit. On the top of here, there's an arrow with a blue paint mark on, which is basically saying blue pipe and the black one here goes just there. But they do fall where you took them off from. And it's just a case of putting it on, click, click, that's it. Let's just wipe off some bits of diesel I've got down there. Clean it up a little bit, a little bit, clean it up a little bit. And next, put the 
electrical connector back on, click and push down the red tab to lock it on. And this lid will go back on. Somewhere there. There we go. that back down. I did spray this with some bright clean to get rid of any stink from the diesel. That's it. Good. Put that back down. We'll lower this seat back down and check it out. All right, seat's back down. Let's prime it a couple of times now because the uh, fuel lines have been disconnected, there's going to be air in those pipes, a bit like when you do a fuel filter on these things. Um, I always think five turns ignition on and then off um, should be enough to prime it. So we'll do that now. One, two, three, four, five where's my gauge going now just over quarter that's probably about right um, I'm glad it was there and not full because I've had to submerge my hand in it as it is so let's see if we can start it there we are straight away let's go back to the auto and actually it should give us a proper reading now of what fuel is in the tank as I say, before I started, I cleared the code, but you did have this code here, this uh, uh, 00771, which actually said there was a mechanical malfunction, which was brilliant, and indeed there was. Um, the live data that I looked at beforehand, it was stuck on 12 litres, saying it was 12 litres, so we'll see what there is now actually in the tank, and there is 17 litres. So that's probably why customer carried around a fuel can behind the seat. I won't have to do that anymore because we have a fix. That's it, all good on road test. If you ever get that problem after a rear end smash, your uh, 2005 1.9 TDI Golf, uh, fuel gauge stops working, more than likely that's what's going to be the problem. It's quite easy just to take out and do inspect, you don't have to have all the, the fancy diagnostic stuff. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video anyway. Don't forget to connect to me on Facebook and Twitter and on Google Plus. And if you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button, that little logo down the corner, and we'll all be friends. Take care, thanks for watching.